We've all been there. You're sat down surrounded by food and you're ready to try and kill yourself by eating too many nachos while watching a wrestling pay-per-view. It's a wonderful time for all. We should never forget how special such times are. Death by nacho. Lovely. However, given that all pro wrestling cards are subject to change, you're never entirely sure what may happen even right up to the show starting. Plenty of times there's been huge surprises out of nowhere that have rocked the industry, which of course includes your viewing of this event. It'd be like those nachos being stolen away and replaced with, I don't know, a carrot. Screw carrots. I'm Simon from What Culture. This is 10 last minute WWE paper replacements that shook the world. Number 10, Mick Foley at the Raw Rumble 2004. Now straight away you may be shouting, well wait, surely this list is just going to be surprise Raw Rumble entrance. Well no, no it's not. Technically, they're not replacing anyone so they are banned from these walls. But that's not what happened at the 2004 Rumble with Mick Foley. As Stone Cold Steve Austin was playing Sheriff, he found Test laid out backstage and can you believe it, Test was meant to be in the marquee match that evening. Oh, whatever will we do? Well, Austin had a plan as he spied who had committed this heinous act and ordered them to compete instead which is when the hardcore legend strutted his way down the aisle. It was awesome because no one saw it coming and even better because he went after Randy Orton, eliminating both himself and the then legend killer by going all in with a clothesline over the top rope. This wasn't just for fun either as it set up a feud between the two and from that we got their crazy backlash match which even by today is brutal to watch. So what a last minute replacement this really was. Number 9, Shawn Michaels at the Survivor Series 1993. Life is weird, not fair as WWE told us in 1997, because no one ever said it would be. Good point. Anyway, at the 93 Survivor Series, life did indeed take control by shifting around the card and then some. After spending a lot of time building up a feud between Jerry Lawler and Bret Hart, which was going to continue through November with a traditional Survivor Series bout, the King got himself into some bother with the law, which was, for the record, dropped after further investigation. This left the company scrambling for a replacement though, so who stepped into Lawler's shoes? None other than Shawn Michaels. At the time, there wasn't much ado about anything when it came to the Hitman and HBK, but in hindsight, man, was this a window into a very controversial future just a few years later. Number 8, William Regal, The Big Show and Matt Hardy at the Great American Bash 2006. Well, this was a weird night, wasn't it? Like the night people's livers just decided to attack and who knows why. It isn't a place to cast aspersions. To cast aspersions, we shall not. However, at the Great American Bash 2006, we not only lost our Undertaker vs. Great Kali Punjabi prison match, but we also saw Fit Finley vs. Bobby Lashley for the US title go down in flames and Gregory Helms vs. Super Crazy. Why, Slaphead? Because of elevated liver enzymes. Now I'll leave it to you to decide the hows and whats and ifs, but this was a ridiculous night for WWE because it saw the Big Show take Carly's place, Regal take Lashley's place, and Matt Hardy stand in for Super Crazy. You could, should, argue that show was a welcome change, but talk about a card being shaken to its very core. It all happened so suddenly too, meaning, you'd imagine, that WWE had gone looking for this stuff. Otherwise, what on earth was going on? Number 7, Razor Ramon at In Your House 4. Before In Your House 4, IC champ Shawn Michaels got beaten up for real and couldn't compete at the pay-per-view. That's just stupid and a pretty good story to underline how Michaels seemed to be at the time. No wonder he blocked me on Twitter when I say things like that. This meant we did need a replacement, however, to take on Shane Douglas, and like everything that had happened before this, it was all stupid afterwards as well. For starters, the title was just given to Douglas like it was his birthday, and before he could even rack up a day as champion, Razor Ramon took Sean's place and beat him in 10 minutes. Goes to show that no matter what business you're in, being friends with the right people helps because, let's be honest, you'd imagine Michaels wasn't exactly upset about one of his best mates being put in this position. Number 6, Max Mini, Nova, Mosaic and Tarantula at Bad Blood 1997. Thankfully it hasn't happened so much in recent years, but there was a time where it seemed like the death of a wrestler being announced at the start of the show was par for the course. Absolutely horrific each and every time. It always resulted in the same feeling. Do I now really want to watch a wrestling pay-per-view? There's no real right or wrong answer, but in 1997 at the Bad Blood event, we were told almost as soon as the broadcast started that Brian Pillman had passed away earlier that day. This was even more hard-hitting because he was meant to take on Dude Love that night. It wasn't as if during this period Pillman was persona non grata. He was right in the thick of everything. As we know, the pay-per-view did go on, and Max Mini and Nova vs Mosaic and Tarantula had the dubious task of filling in the time where the loose cannon would have wrestled, which is an achievement in anyone's book. Surprised anyone could even have a match that night, let alone try and fill a void, but that's what happened. It remains one of the darkest days in pro wrestling history. Number 5, Savio Vega at No Way Out 1998. No one ever remembers this, and that's probably because it happened almost 20 years ago. I can't even remember what happened yesterday. 
think it involved a dog. The point is, we all do forget a lot of stuff, including in 1998 where Savio Vega stood in for Shawn Michaels of all people. The main event for this night, incredibly, was going to be Cactus Jack, Chainsaw Charlie, Owen Hart and Steve Austin going against the New Age Outlaws Triple H and Michaels, so DX essentially. That's especially interesting given this version of D-Generation X never really existed with HBK and it's even more interesting you didn't hear either. Sean pulled out due to the back injury that would eventually force him into retirement at the time, which isn't good. So who was on call to take the plunge? That's right, Savio Vega, which makes no sense on paper, but hey, he was a good worker and Stone Cold loved working with him, as you'll know if you listen to his podcast so there. Amazingly, Vega didn't take the pin here as much as you assume he would have done. Austin stunned Road Dog for the 1-2-3 with Savio trying and failing to break it up. You know. Number four, the Texas Tornado at SummerSlam 1990. Just as brute as the barber beefcake had a title in his grasp, it was stolen away from him like a thief in the night. Oh Brutus, how my heart sings for you, dear friend. But yeah, with the hairdresser due to take on Mr. Perfect at the 1990 SummerSlam, our pal life returned to get in the way, as it loves to do. Beefcake legitimately broke his face after a parasailing accident which not only kept him out for months, but also forced WWE into making a change here. Kind of a dude with a mashed up skull fighting for a championship. This nod instead was given to Kerry Von Erich, aka the Texas Tornado, who would actually defeat Perfect for IC Gold, the only title he ever won during his WWE run. This, one would assume, means that Brutus was going to have his taste of glory here. It just wasn't meant to be. Number three, the big show at Survivor Series 1999. Remember how we talked about a wrestling card is always subject to change? This is evidence that WWE really does take that as literally as possible if it suits them, which is fine, of course, but still can make for some last minute swerves. In 1999, Stone Cold needed to take some time off because he was injured. The problem though, was he had a match booked for the 1999 Survivor Series, which just so happened to be for the world title. That's why even when the pay-per-view began, Austin was still listed as one of the challengers. As we now know, this was indeed the night the Rattlesnake was run down by a car after Rikishi decided to do that for The Rock or something. His stand-in, The Big Show, who had already competed that night. And wouldn't you know it, he won the flipping belt. The internet exploded with rage. Probably, I don't know, wasn't using it back then. Just enjoying wrestling for what it was. But still, it remains one of those moments we all talk about and then some. Number two, Johnny Nitro at Vengeance 2007. This last minute replacement is the worst for so many reasons, as I'm sure many of you will know. The setup was as follows. Bobby Lashley had been stripped of the ECW World Championship, setting up a pay-per-view bout for the vacant title between CM Punk and Chris Benoit. Benoit would miss Vengeance and he would be replaced by Johnny Nitro, who would go on to win the championship and help launch his career. It really was a highlight for him at the time, even though he undoubtedly would have shone regardless. It was just that good. Of course, the reason he took Benoit's place was because this was the weekend when the double murder-suicide involving Chris took place, an act which is still borderline unspeakable today. Number one, the ultimate warrior at SummerSlam 1988. One of the most well-known late replacements ever came when WWE pay-per-views were still finding their feet. Happening all the way back in 1988, things were so young and fresh that this was the first SummerSlam ever. Look at that! The debut, the arrival, the initial show. The thing was, as the Honky Tonk Man, who was the IC champion at the time, stood in the ring waiting for our buddy Brutus Beefcake to come down the rampway, well he didn't. Instead, the Ultimate Warrior bombarded his way to the ring and defeated Honky in seconds. This was even more surprising given that the Tonk Man had held the title for an astonishing 14 months at this point. It was all planned, of course, as opposed to an event forcing WWE's hand, but still, this was major news then and a historic moment today. Know of any other WWE pay-per-view replacements that shook the world? Let us know in that comment box below and then make sure you like, share and subscribe and head over to whatculture.com to read some articles and follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from What Culture, and if I had been clever, I would have got someone to replace me here, but I'm not clever, so I didn't have it. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below, and also the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time. <laughs>